to do is just uh, a demonstration working with ourselves in the uh, the ambulance. Uh, at this stage, we're not we're not cutting the vehicle because of this scenario we don't need to cut the vehicle. But it's to give you an idea of the equipment we have, the fault processes that we have to go through when we turn up, and then what the crews will need to do. When we're turning up to a, an incident, we get a turnout from our station printer and it'll tell us what we're going to. And in this situation, we, we're going to a school where a driver's been distracted by our, on a mobile phone. A child stepped out in front of the end of the road and the driver's gone over the top of the child. Okay? The child, the ambulance will come along and they'll tell us what status the, the child's in at this moment in time and they'll also take into account the casualty in the vehicle. En route, uh, I'm the officer in charge, so en route I'll designate my crew as to who's going to be in charge of tools, who's going to look after the casualty initially, um, and any other jobs that might need doing. When we first turn up, the first thing we need to do is approach slowly, because we don't want to involve anybody else. There are other people that like to watch, if anyone's ever been stuck in an accident, you know that there's a lot of people that like to rub a neck and it causes more and more issues and you can end up creating another accident so we want to take care of that okay so uh, and it also by approaching slowly gives me chance to weigh up the scene to see what i'm looking for so that we can put a plan of action in, in place okay depending on what the ambulance crew say we might have a bit of time to deal with the casualty then again it might be what we call rapid extrication where it doesn't matter, we need to get this person out and out of the way very quickly. So while we're on route, we've arrived, the ambulance crews are, are already in attendance. They're going to have a look at the casualty and they're going to talk you through what they're looking for in a casualty. While they're doing that, my crew are going to set up an equipment dump and the idea being is that all the equipment they need for the, to carry out that job is all there for them. So they haven't got to keep going backwards and forwards to the fire engine to get things. It's all there ready so that we can just come backwards and forwards and use it as and when we need to. So if I hand you over to our esteemed colleagues in the ambulance. So when we first arrive at a scene like this, the first thing we're going to be looking for is any danger to ourselves. So we're going to be checking the scene, is there any fuel spillages, is there any sharp metal, any broken glass, anything that's going to cause injury to us. So once we've established that it's safe to approach, the next thing we're going to do is check for a response for this patient. So Tracy's checking for a verbal response. If we get a verbal response, we know that the patient's number one conscious, and that number two, that their airway's uh, intact and, and functioning as it should be. Uh, Patient speaking, so straight away we've got a good response, which means that the conscious level is, is fully alert. Um, we're going to then start looking at the airway to see if there's any airway problems at all. There are airway problems, we have lots of methods and equipment that can do with these, but at the same time as the airway, we've got to be considering the C spine, which is the upper part of the neck, the spinal area there. In a situation such as this, if this was a high speed incident, would be considering that this part of the neck might be injured. Any movement to that patient's head or neck now could be catastrophic in the long term, could cause all sorts of problems with paralysis. This is a low speed impact, so we're not considering that at this stage. But we'll, we'll give it a thought when we're managing the area. The next thing we move on to is the breathing, to see how, how the breathing is the rise and fall of the chest equal and is is the rate and the depth of the breathing as it should be. Once, once we've established the breathing, we then start to move on to other injuries, disabilities. Uh, looking at, again at the conscious level, looking at any secondary injuries that may have caused in the situation. We've obviously got this issue with the child still under the car, so we're now going to start looking at extricating as well. In the meantime, Trace is going to be assessing this patient, assessing for a central pulse, usually at the carotid area feeling for that pulse and making sure that that's alright. In a child, if the pulse starts to go slow, then we need to act quickly. 